Hello lads, today we're going to be taking a look at Peppermint OS, which is a lightweight Debian based distribution shipped with XFCE. I'm going to go ahead and pop it on a virtual machine and then I'm going to figure out if I want to install it on a bare metal device. So anyways, here we go. I've already actually allocated the virtual machine size. So I went ahead and went with the Debian release of Peppermint OS. There's also a Duvian version for those of you that don't like System D. However, I'm fine with it. And right here we have, we're prompted to do a live install. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Now Peppermint OS is essentially Debian, but with the most minimal packages installed by default. So here we go. What is Peppermint OS? Let's read the about, because why not? Should already have a bridged Wi-Fi adapter from the VM. So there should be absolutely no problem there. However, I'm going to go ahead and make this scaled. Anyways, so we're going to go ahead and select packages. Uh, I'll go with, this is, wow, they have a GUI for this. Honestly, I could do without anything, to be honest, and just install it after. But... Now, to be fair, I could probably go about getting much of this kind of stuff, but it is convenient that they did offer it. And you're able to, it basically guides you through installing the packages without actually having to uh, type in the package name and do sudo apt-get install. So I'll go with Chromium. I'll definitely go with Tor. Tor is actually one of the harder packages here to install. That is uh, with compilations and that kind of stuff. Usually you get a, a tar I believe with Tor, you have to compile it yourself. I don't want any snaps. Uh, I don't even. I don't even want any firewalls. I don't even want a media player. And yeah, I think that's good enough, really. <laughs> All we need is a web browser, or two. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select. Okay, they have online documentation, and wow. Now we just gotta go ahead and install the operating system, I guess. So we'll go with a goofy name. We have no password. Yes, we can. Okay, and simple as that. It's literally as simple as that. This isn't no Arch or Gentoo install. Even though Arch is really easy to install too, all you have to do is do Arch install, the commands. Um, yeah, and we get placed into an XFCE Debian box. You would really not be able to know any difference otherwise, you know, if you just install Debian, but there are a few nuances, such as this uh, custom XFCE panel. And anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and open up a terminal window and get ourselves started. See how much it's actually taking up as a minimal lightweight distribution as it promises. Okay, so, oh, it's losing up a gig already. Xorg obviously is taking up a lot. And the terminal was, okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get NeoFetch of course so we can do a little show off Unix porn rice. Amazing. There we go. Fucking amazing. XFCE 4.18. Um you guys can see my resources there. Yeah it's using up a gig of RAM. I'm doing almost nothing actually. Well, that's typical. Here's the processes. Okay, so let's take a tour around this thing. I, I was able to pre-install Tor Browser, that's cool. I can use this as a glorified Tails machine, although I don't know why I would do that. I could just boot Tails on bare metal. I guess a virtual machine might be a better idea. In case if I was scared of getting a BIOS rootkit, 
However, what else do we have here? Just your typical stuff. You got your XFC file manager. Use this if you're a noob. Honestly, you use uh, a GUI and XFCE if you're a noob. So we're going to go ahead and install i3 next because I'm already bored. But yeah, pretty nice. I guess what we could go ahead and do is see how we, how much we can rise just off XFCE. Oh, that's that would be kind of boring and I want to override it with i3 in a second anyways. But yeah, very neat distribution. Do I see myself installing this? Actually, yes. If I were to ever have a scenario where I want to install Debian again. Which I have Debian on my laptop currently, but it's got i3. And I don't really feel like switching up. But if I were to revert back to a standard desktop environment, honestly, I could definitely see myself using Peppermint Run OS because it's just minimum. So minimum, in fact, that we don't really get any more over backgrounds. Even Kelly comes with more backgrounds. I would typically XFCE. Okay, so I've restarted. I'm able to get disable this auto start bullshit. And so now I'm going to go ahead and get to work at installing i3. And just as a little gig, see Peppermint OS with i3. And yeah, uh, so i3 works fine. Um, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not a big ricer. Okay, I think ricing for too long is stupid. I think honestly, like you need very minimum. You need very, very minimum to your rice. Okay, you shouldn't have too much stuff. That's not the point. When you get a window manager, the point isn't ricing; it's efficiency. Recommend this operating system absolutely over anything like Ubuntu Mate, which is like obsolete boomer crap at this point. And Linux Mint. People will be installing stuff like Linux Mint. Don't do that. You know, just go with Debian or I guess Peppermint OS. Peppermint OS is literally just, it's just minimal, it's bare bones Debian. And it serves its purpose. So for that I am very happy. So expect, you know, your typical long repository awaitings and yeah so just install arch is probably what my advice is but if you're going with a debian operating system i think peppermint os is a solid choice especially if you want to have that nice prepackaged xfce design but you can always switch to i3 too like i demonstrated so should you install peppermint os i don't know you're your own boss so you decide that for yourself anyways thank you for watching see you guys later